School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Alberta Canola Producers Commission. Well, today we're here in southern Alberta looking at this field that was um, hit by frost. Um, a lot of the areas, a lot of the regions in southern Alberta were hit by a frost that was anywhere from that, you know, minus four and reports all the way to minus eight. Um, now this field in particular, it was seeded on April 22nd and the canola started to emerge on around the 5th is when I was out here last and first started to see growth. Um, now the frost came on May, May 9th and what had happened was is it got down to about minus two and then the next day it was uh, the temperatures got up to about 10 above and then it dipped right down to that minus four to minus eight anywhere in southern Alberta here. Now that's a major concern but it's it's also a little bit better for us um, when that uh, when that temperature dipped down the day before and it didn't get too warm in the day. It's when we go to those variances that are like 25 above and then you know down to minus five for a few hours and then up to 25 above again it's those those rash variances in the temperature that are really going to uh, affect the mortality rate with the canola here. So we okay Troyce we're out, we're out here in the field we're going to start to evaluate the frost damage. What are some of the steps we got to take? Well I think step one is uh, we want to make sure that we don't only scout in one spot in one situation. I scouted this field pretty vigorously and um, I, I checked it out in about 10 different locations across the field and um, one thing that I noticed right away is, uh, is the green patches where the swath laid the previous season. And um, that's where the thickest thatch was. So what we were seeing is we were seeing lots of um, high mortality rate in these sort of areas. And uh, it was covered more. And what happens is that kind of acts as a, uh, um, as you would think it would act as an insulator, I guess, but it actually uh, makes it cooler. We want that nice dark soil um, to absorb the heat and kind of keep it a little bit warmer. It's still going to freeze, but it might not stay as cold as long if the soil's nice and black. Uh, we want to make sure that we're looking in those areas where there is heavy thatch as well. We can't just take samples and plant counts in areas where, where the soil's all nice and black. And as we know a lot of times, so frost does settle. So the lower lying areas, there may be a little bit higher mortality rate than up on the hills. And, and what you want to do is you want to look inside the rows and um, you know do some counts. Here we have two plants three, four plants that are all right side by side here. And um, I'm gonna just point out a few things here. This is the first thing we look for, is we wanna do our plant counts, but we wanna see what's gonna survive. And here we have a new leaf starting to push out here at the hypercotyledon. The hypercotyledon is also known as the, also known as the growing point. So as we can see, it's starting to come out there. And this one here as well, we have two definite survivors here in this little stretch here. So how do we know they're gonna survive? Well, we know they're gonna survive because this new green leaf is starting to push out. And then if I turn it just to the side, there's not really any pinching off going on down here and we'll typically see um, pinching off and uh, it will restrict the nutrients and the moisture from getting up to the plant. So if we're kind of unsure, like maybe we would be in this situation, you know we, we sometimes do see some new green growth, but what we want to do is we want to carefully pull it apart and then just sort of look for that nice green growing point. And so you, you know, three days later we see some additional green, we know we're okay. Well, we know we're okay, yeah. But often we'll see, um, see this nice lime green inside. It's getting the nutrients and it's starting to regrow again. What we want to look for is, um, is as many plants that have the new green growth and are starting to come back. And um, you know, we want to make sure, I guess, that, uh, that if it is pinched off, um, and it's pinched off and restricting a lot, maybe half or 50%. I think that maybe I would count two of those as one surviving plant. Okay, so we're counting here. Um, basically just counting the amount of plants inside the hula hoop? Yeah, what I was doing before is I was counting the amount that were actually uh, with the mortality rate, uh, the ones that died um, versus the ones that were surviving. So here we just threw the hula hoop. This represents four square feet. Um, I'm just going to start here in this row, Sean, and as we can see here, we've got new growth. So this is plant that just had emerged um, over the weekend or maybe even yesterday. Um, and here we have one right beside it that was hit by frost. There's that growing point we're looking for, but you can just kind of see that pinching off starting to happen right That's there. That's hard to see. Yeah, so we'll, we'll take a closer look at that in a bit, but um, I would count that one as a half a one. So we've got one and a half and then another new growth here. So that's two and a half 
and then um, this one here this guy's gonna make it and there's another one right beside it so that's two more we're up to five six plants there here this one I'm gonna give a half so we're at seven with that other half um, here's some new growth that I think that some of these maybe just came out yesterday actually these two here plants uh, you know they're um, they're pretty brown and wilted that one the the growing point just pulled right off let's just pull some stuff aside yeah so here we have one that some green growth is starting to come but then the one his neighbor right beside him here he's not gonna make it and uh, so eight um, nine and I think we're at about 10 plants per square for per square four feet so you know we're just over that two plants per square foot here um, you know it's not good it, it's not good no it isn't okay but, so and how many surviving plants do we require well you know that's the million dollar question I think um, Canola Council of Canada we um, we recommend growers hitting that target plant stance of 7 to 14 plants per square foot and this is exactly why after throwing circles uh, plant doing plant counts around here um, we found that 60 percent actually had died of the canola and um, leaving 40 percent surviving we're down to about two two point two plants per square foot here so it, it's pretty low um, but it's still we're getting late in the game it's May 15th today um, I think the grower should uh, should keep this uh, plant stand and um, and just carry on. Once we get this late in the game, to reseed is, uh, you know, we might not have the yield there. Mm -hmm.